Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Of these people, who would you consider to be the most significant? Who is of more significance? Uh, Who is most important? Is it the President of, of the United States or... Maybe it's pastors or doctors and nurses, or maybe we might consider the uh, police officer uh, more important, more significant, or maybe the uh, elderly person who is confined to a nursing home is the most significant. Or maybe it's teachers or uh, their students, the poor. Maybe a star athlete. Or uh, yesterday, uh, we might consider... uh, my youngest daughter, Grace, to be of most significance as she was welcomed into the, uh, the kingdom of our Heavenly Father through the waters of holy baptism where she was claimed as Christ's very own when he placed his name upon her and gave her the gifts of his grace, those gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Or maybe it's just any child in general. Who is of more significance? And we could probably uh, justify any kind of reason for any one of these people to be more significant, more important, more valuable than anybody else, and uh, that would be all right. But maybe you think of yourself as more important, more significant. Now, maybe not more important than everybody, but there's probably at least some people that we think we are more significant then. And more often than not, our sinful nature wants us to think more highly of ourselves than what we really ought to think. And the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the uh, Philippians, he encourages us to be of a different mindset. He encourages us to think differently about our significance and the significance of of others. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, or the uh, King James Version says, out of uh, vain glory, but in humility. Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you not look only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Now, when Paul wrote this letter to the, to the Philippians, he was writing to a, a group of probably Roman, uh, retired Roman soldiers. Uh, Philippi in the first century was, uh, was this uh, wealthy Roman colony where uh, the Roman soldiers would go off to retire and enjoy their life as a Roman citizen. And so these were guys who had spent their entire lives uh, living up to a king and country, training themselves for the greatest virtues in the land at that time to be honorable citizens and honorable soldiers for Rome to the glory of the Roman way of life. But now Paul tells them that as Christians, They are to be thinking differently. Not to live a life of uh, worthy of a worldly country. Of living a life uh, worthy of Rome. But they are to live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in our sinfulness, it's not always easy for us to think, of others above ourselves. We often think more highly of ourselves. And there might be some people that we hold in high regard that we think a lot about, who we think are very important people, and uh, and we put them up on a pedestal. But more often than we'd probably like to admit, we think that we are more important than other people. We selfishly look to our own interests, to our own needs, to our own wants, our own desires, rather than looking to the interests of others. And have we not certainly seen that this past year, these last several months? Our sinful nature, uh, the selfishness of our sinful nature has been on full display. And there 
uh, as we've pushed for my own agenda, pushed for my own interests, whether it's been regarding masks or politics, whether it's been people's health, the economy, or whose life is, uh, is more important, whose life matters more, we have this tendency to selfishly look to our own interests so that we might climb up that social ladder to gain praise and be glorified for what we have done by worldly standards and we seek after our own selfish gain rather than looking to those interests of others. And we have this tendency to want what we want done. And, we, and when we don't get our own way, what do we do but complain and grumble all about it? But the Apostle Paul says, Do all things without grumbling or questioning, so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of this crooked and twisted, this sinful generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that we are to count others as more important, look to their interests, and do it without grumbling so that we can be lights to a sinful world. We are called to be different, to live differently than the world lives. We are to live or to have a different mindset than this crooked and twisted sinful generation. We are to have the same mind as Christ. Now, it's really kind of a shame that our our lectionary leaves uh, leaves out this section from Philippians chapter two, verses eleven uh, five through eleven, which uh, is just kind of an optional reading for today. But this is really kind of the meat and potatoes of this whole section. This is what it's really all about. Uh, what's at the heart is in it. We see the way in which Jesus exercises his significance. He exercises his significance not by boasting about it, not by lording it over others, but he does it by taking on the form of a humble servant, coming down from his heavenly form to, uh, throne to take on the likeness of men, to become a human being, taking on our sinfulness, taking on our sins and becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so Jesus counts all of humanity as more significant, more important, more valuable than himself. Even as he is highly exalted and every knee is to bow at the name of Jesus, Jesus sees each and every one of you as more significant than himself. He sees each and every one of you as more important, more valuable, to the point that he would sacrifice, willingly sacrifice his life and die upon a cross. To rescue you and save you from your sins so that we might live a life that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. And why does he do this? Well, it's because he has claimed you as his own through holy baptism. Last night we got to see that uh, work of God's grace uh, at work as um, our daughter Grace was baptized and his, God placed his name upon her. And it was in your baptisms that God too placed his name, that name that is above every name, to make you the most significant person in the world. And it's like in Toy Story, when Andy writes his name on the bottom of uh, Woody and Buzz's feet and all the rest of his toys, by placing his name, by writing his name on his toys, he gives his toys significance. They're not just simple toys anymore. They are his toys. They are Andy's toys. They belong to him. And that gives them their significance. 
And in the same way, in baptism, God has placed His name upon you to claim you as His very own, to give you uh, significance, to give you life, to count you as the most significant person in His glorious kingdom. And in our baptismal liturgy, we, we hear these uh, words from Mark chapter 10, uh, when people are bringing children to Jesus so that they might touch them. The disciples are rebuking them, but Jesus just rebukes his disciples right back, and he tells them, let the little children come to me. Jesus welcomes the little children, and in another place, uh, Jesus places a child in the midst of his disciples, and he says, this is the most important person in the kingdom of God. And it's not because children are so cute and innocent that they're so precious and valuable and wonderful in the kingdom of God. It's because they are completely dependent on others. Children completely rely on others for their livelihood. And in the ancient world, children had no significance. They were an inconvenience. They were worthless because they contributed nothing to society. But then Jesus welcomes them, places them in the midst of his disciples and says, these children are more important than anyone in God's kingdom because they completely rely and depend on someone else. And so, too, we rely and completely depend upon God and our Savior Jesus for life. And so, who is of more significance? Well, it's that person who relies and depends solely and completely on Christ Jesus for life. And who is that? Well, it's you. It's sinners. It's the entire world, all people, because we are all completely reliant on Jesus and his forgiveness, life, and salvation for us. And so have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. In humility, count others as more significant than yourselves. Look to the interests and needs of others above your own needs and interests, and do it without complaining or grumbling. And what that all means is that, uh, is that we are to count that person who is of the opposite political party as our own as more significant than ourselves. We are to count the, the poor and the lonely as more significant than ourselves. We are to count the young and the old as more significant than we are. We are to count the health and the life of every person as more significant than our very own. And by doing so, you will be glad and rejoice. For in Christ Jesus, he has counted us as more significant than himself. Amen.